Are you looking for a while better, amazed at the natural beauty, and decided that you want one yourself? Then you go on eBay and search up Wild Alien Better. I know what you're doing. This is literally what every newbie does. You might not know it, but you're actually making a big mistake because alien betas are not beginner friendly, at least in my opinion. Now, this isn't a knock against alien betas because they're really cool and I like them too, but they tend to have a lot of genetic issues, they get sick real easily, and this means a bad experience for beginners just getting into these fish. But what if I tell you that there is a fish out there that is just as amazingly beautiful as aliens, are super hardy, and they're actually a wild type. And this better is Beta Smeradinas. In this video, I'm gonna go over what they are, why they are so unique from other bubble nesting betas, and three reasons on why they are absolutely the best fish for beginners. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're not only gonna learn a few things, but you're probably gonna wanna get one yourself too. So what the heck are beta smeridinas? Smeridinas are a bubble nesting betas in the splendid complex. And what is the splendid complex? The splendid complex refer to a group of closely related betas similar to the original wild beta splendids. This includes very popular wild betas such as beta mahachiensis and beta embellus. Now compared to the rest of the splendid complex, not only is Smeridinus the most distant, but they also are the most genetically diverse. In fact, there is just as much genetic diversity within Smeridinus as there are between the different types of Splendens. So what are the traits that makes Smeridinus different from other Splendens? The first one is a snake-like iridescence on the gill plates and the face. This is actually the most important trait, as all Smeridinus have them. You can use this trait to differentiate them between beta mahachiensis, as mahachiensis have dual bars iridescence on the gill plates. Another trait you can use to differentiate mahachiensis from smeridinas is the body scale and iridescence. Smeridinas have small scale gaps, while mahachiensis tend to have larger gaps between the scales. Now, when these aren't always apparent, you can always look at the tail. Smeridinas have lower spread iridescence on the caudal fins, and they also have wild spots. And in Mahachianches, the iridescence covers much more the tails, and they tend not to have such prominent wild spots. As we learned earlier, Smeridinas are pretty damn diverse, but in the hobbies, we can categorize them into three different types. The first one is your Smeridina Classic. They tend to have long fins and a slim body. They also tend to have much more iridescence spread throughout their body. The next type is my favorite and the one I pretty much recommend to everybody, and that is Smeridina Guitars. They are pretty much like Smeridina Classic, except they have this cool spiderweb pattern on the tail. The next one is one of the rarest betas in the world, and that is Beta Stictos. They are actually a type of Smeridinas, even though they are called Beta Stictos. They are much smaller than the other Smeridinas, tend to have shorter fins, but they do have the most prominent facial scaling out of all of them. And the last one is called Smeridinas Buriram, or Buriram? I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. But anyway, I know I said that there was only three types. But that's because I don't think Smeridina buriram is actually a true wild type species. I think it's actually a man-made hybrid. And the reason why I think so is because they just have too much like bling. Thickness of the iridescence and the way it spread just shows me that it was probably created to look very pretty. Also, I can't really find any information on them regarding specimen being captured or their actual location. So for now, I actually don't consider them a true Smeridinus. And now let's go over the reason why these guys are such great fish for beginners or even experts. And the first reason is their incredible resistance to high and low temperature. You see, betters being a tropical fish don't do so well when the temperature drops too low. You see, the reason for their ruggedness has something to do with where they've come from. With the exception of Beta Stictos, Smeridinas and Smeridina Guitars come from the region of northeastern Thailand, where the temperature is also much more extreme. This area tend to receive less rain and have much higher temperature extremes. Some areas, especially where Smeridina Guitar comes from, can often reach below 9 degrees Celsius. That's below 40 degrees Fahrenheit for you Americans. So by adaptation, these fish are actually very resistant to the cold. And actually, there's an interesting story about how I actually discovered this. One time, without my knowledge, I accidentally left some fries and chuvies inside an outdoor tank over the winter. And in California, the winter time can actually be below 30 degrees. So during the fall and spring, without me even realizing that they were there at all, I ended up finding a couple of adults as I was cleaning out my outdoor tank. So because of this, it actually led me to do research online to figure out why these fish do so well in low temperature compared to the other splendids. The second reason why this is the best betas to get is that they're pretty easy to breed. In fact, splendids in general are relatively easy to breed. Unlike a lot of tropical fish, there isn't a huge requirement on having specific water parameters. 
they'll pretty much breed for you as long as you have a healthy male and female and it doesn't really require a lot of space to do so. Now there is a little bit of a learning curve to it and a lot of newbies get thrown off by it. I have made a guide in the past on how to breed these fish but I realized I put way too much information and people would end up not really watching the whole video through. So what I've been thinking about is making a mini series on how to breed splendens and making it so easy and simple that literally anybody can do it and I'm almost guaranteed that you will be successful. So go ahead and follow me for those videos in the future. After all, breeding fish is one of the funnest things you can do as an aquarium hobbyist. And the last reason why smeraldinas are freaking awesome is actually their variety. And I'm not talking about the different types of smeraldinas like smeraldina classic, smeraldina guitars, and beta stictos. I'm talking about the color morphs and hybrids that you can get out of breeding these fish. For example, one of the most stunning fish that I have ever bred was this smeraldina copper. And to this day, I wish I kind of continued this line because it was a very popular fish and everybody loved it. Besides that, here are some of the hybrids that I have bred over the years. Alright guys, so I think that's going to be it. I hope this video was very informative. You know, I didn't go over too much about beta stictos. I think those fish deserve a video of their own, so I might make one in the future. Like always, let me know what kind of question you guys have down below in the comments, and what kind of videos you guys like to see in the future. You know, I really love making these videos for you guys, but I really want to know what kind of content you guys like. That way, I can stay motivated and keep making contents that you guys really really like. So please let me know down below. And like always,